All right, Milo, Milo Carter. Welcome to the Creative People Time Podcast, man. How you doing? Doing pretty well. How about yourself? Pretty good, pretty good. Um, you're so real quick for my audience. How about why don't you introduce yourself, like your name, where you're at, and uh, a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so my name is Milo Carter, and uh, right right now I live in uh, Long Beach, California. And uh, so right now I also work for Boeing as a software engineer, um, which is pretty cool. Um, but I also do some things on the side for myself, you know, hobby-wise, um, as in uh, making music and video production. Yeah, dude, I was looking at your stuff. You got some. You got some pretty cool. You got some pretty cool uh, content out there. That and, and uh, oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, dude. <laughs> um. So, so I guess bringing it like back. So this this podcast this season, I, I'm doing like origin stories. So okay. I kind of start off the first half with you know where you come from and et cetera. So, uh, yeah, tell me about like, where you, where you come from, where were you born and, uh, where were you, you know, raised? Uh, yeah. So I was born in the South side of Chicago, Illinois, um, with my, uh, I was raised by my, my mom and dad, uh, my mom's Mexican and my dad's black. Uh, so grew up on a pretty, pretty, uh, low income area. Um, in this like little tiny apartment, uh, it's kind of beat up and everything. Um, so yeah, I was south side Chicago. Um, it wasn't a good area, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, south side Chicago. So you you were born prob- probably in what 92, 93? 93, yep. 93, nice. Same age as Christine. And by the way, there's there's a little popping sound. I don't know. What that might be. Oh, that's actually my dog. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> He's chewing on something. Uh, come here. Oh, just hold on. <laughs> it's all good. I'll yeah, take that out. This deck the oh. <laughs> He's chewing on okay. a, a plastic bottle. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah, you can see my dog in the background chilling. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nice. So, so, um, you're born and up. I didn't know for some reason I was thinking you were from California because uh, you live there now. Uh huh. So you you're not from California. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. So so did you like growing up in Chicago? How was that? Yeah, I mean, I um, you know, I do miss it and all that. Um, I did. You know, I you know I can appreciate it uh, more now growing up. Uh, at least from where my how my parents grew up and everything. So, as you know, the saying goes, "Never forget where you come from." So I can uh, you know appreciate California and all the the things that I have now. Um, but yeah, like there's times where I miss home, and uh, when I go back, I'll you know take a little stroll down memory lane and see where I grew up, and it's it still hasn't changed, you know, maybe a few buildings here and there, but it all, it all looks pretty much the same and, you know, same stories go by like, oh yeah, it's still not good here. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I can, you know, and, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, just last December, I mean, it, it could have been part of COVID too, um, but I went down uh, the area I left, um, pretty much left when I went to college um, and it was like it was it looked like a war zone out there it was nobody on the street except for like people literally they wouldn't stop at red lights and my dad's like yeah it's gotten worse in the neighborhood and uh, people were just flying past red lights and then you might see a big group of people sitting in a corner is like ah we, we don't want to stand at this red light let's just keep going you know <laughs> oh yeah. Makes sense. So it's just a like a survival tactic, essentially. Yeah, uh, yeah, and, and that's just the South Side of Chicago. But my family, well, my mom moved up to um, like the Wicker Park area, 
uh, okay. a little bit better, but um, I guess still kind of the same thing, watch your back sort of thing, but safer, nicer too. Yeah, and that's what's up. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, I've heard I've heard some crazy stories about South Side of Chicago, and and uh, you know, there's there's some. I mean, it's a tough part. It's notoriously tough. Um, but like, as far as your upbringing, like, did you have like, was it like your? Did you and your family kind of band together? Do you have brothers and sisters or? Did you have like a little crew growing up? Yeah, uh, well, I had two little brothers. Um, one was a year younger than me, and the other one's four years younger than me. Um, so yeah, I definitely had them under my wing all the time, uh, going to, you know, taking the the train or the bus just to get to school from you know every day, back and forth. That's what's up. And um, you mentioned that you you're father is black and your mom's mexican correct right yes and i i know from knowing people in that area and and being you know growing up close by that it's kind of a divide was that ever in like was that ever an issue like between the black and mexican communities um yeah i mean definitely there definitely was tension you know um but it was i don't know like some people, I guess, can relate to it because I was like, I was too Mexican for the black community and too black for the Mexican community sometimes. And then, you know, the one, the Mexican uh, community or family was just like, ah, you're Mexican, you know, like, <laughs> you know, they're just, you're, you're not black, you know, but you could tell that uh, there was definitely that going on. And I tried to stay away from like, as much as I could from like the the you know the, the threats or the danger of the little kids that are also were also involved in that type of stuff so um and I was treated a little bit unfairly growing up too as a kid you know the get picked on by um other blacks or sometimes you know they would call me like white boy or something but um for the most part it was kind of like oh my dad had to come in and like save the day oh yeah he's he's black too you know like he's that's my son you know and they're oh okay you know back off and all of a sudden, you know, like, oh, that's that's the homeboy Milo right there, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, um, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, um, I think it was I, a, a lot of misunderstanding too, but um, but yeah, it, I mean, you def you definitely noticed it. Yeah, and I I can I can, I can, obviously couldn't relate to that specific uh, um, you know experience, but I. To some degree, I feel like I can relate to the feeling of not, you know, Mexican enough for Mexicans and not, you know, American enough for the Americans. It's kind of that neither aquí neither allá kind of thing from like Selena. Have you ever watched Selena? Uh, yeah, I, I watched some of it. I haven't finished it. <laughs> oh, okay. No, the the movie from back in the days. There was a part where Edward Edward. Uh, Edward James almost, he was like, you know, we're not Mexican enough for the Mexicans and, and uh, we're not American enough for the Americans. So, so you have to be twice as, you have to be twice as Mexican and twice as American. And now you're like four times, you know, whatever. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, that's, I can, I can relate it a little bit, but growing up out there, did you, did you have to like learn how to like scrap and fight? Um, I, I mean, I did actually, um, as a, when I was uh, maybe in elementary school, you know, you get picked on um, a lot and tested um, by other kids because, you know, I guess, I don't know, maybe their folks or their, uh, their older brothers or whatever would teach them or something. But yeah, I, there was a couple of times I did get in a couple of fist fights or uh, had to kind of defend myself and um it's kind of funny too because like one day I decided like oh I'm gonna defend myself so I'm gonna like I, I brought a like a pocket knife to school because I thought I was cool and then I just flashed it off to my bully you know and he like I you know I wasn't planning to do anything to him I was just like hey you know back off I got this you know leave me alone and he just ran off scared and you know teacher teacher like look what he's got you know sort of thing but I think I was yeah. in like like third grade <laughs> Oops. And I, 
and I was just like, oh, you know, I got this little multi-tool thing. It looks cool, you know, just thought it was cool, you know, <laughs> and it just happened that I had it in my hand. I was like, hey, look what I got. <laughs> did you end up getting, like, suspended or anything? Um, Yeah, in that case, I did. But, uh, but that was just, like, one instance that I remember, like, it was funny because, like, uh, where the bully didn't actually, like, come at me that time he just kind of like backed off and ran away and then then he was kind of like hey this guy like is trying to mess with me or something you know like and I you know I had no intention of doing that even though he was like he always would like you know try to jump on me and this this and that you know yeah dude yeah that's crazy and it's and it's interesting to hear that because you're you're a big dude how tall are you Right. Well, I'm six four, but yeah, at the time I was, you know, I was still kind of a little short during those times. Like, you know, oh, maybe yeah. I, my growth spurt kind of hit when I was like in sixth grade, and that's when kind of everything kind of, you know, all the bullies and all that were kind of like, hey, this is my friend right here. You know, he's like, oh, he'll beat you up. He's tall. You know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you hit that. It once you hit that growth spurt, you you didn't have to, you didn't have to like you know, defend yourself as much because people right. realize that we you, you whooped their ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, ever since then, I've had some encounters, like, where it was, like, dangerous, but, like, uh, at the same time, it was, it was more like they were, people were trying to show off because they were in more numbers, you know, and then, yeah. but they still kind of, like, backed off. Um, but I did have another, like, two instances, one where I was walking my brothers to the fish store, you know, like, cause I was really into animals and all that. So, you know, I, I think I was probably like eight or no, you know, I was, I was 10 or something. I was going to the fish store and these big group of guys come out and they're like, Hey, you got change for, you know, for a, for a 10 or something. And I'm like, yeah, you know, my little cash I have. And then, uh, so I give him a change and then with the big group of people, he just snatches all my money and walks away. Damn. And then, uh, so I'm like, dude, like, I don't even know what to do in that, that at that point. And then there was another time I was definitely a lot older. Um, and I was on the, like, there was this homeless guy who was asking for money on the subway. So I gave him money. And then this other guy comes up, you know, he's like, uh, he has like well dressed and all that. And he just reminded me of those people that were going to, they, they robbed me the one time. So he uh, comes up to me, hey, let me get a, let me get a dollar too. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm good. So then he literally sticks his hand in my pocket, grabs my cash, you know? What the fuck? And then I just grab him and then I'm like I'm like holding him over the still uh the stairwell, like, dude, like I'm not about to do this right now. <laughs> so he just let he was like, All right, all right, like let's go and <laughs> goes about my day. But, you know, for the most part it was definitely kind of just watch my back sort of thing and uh just, you know, you you kind of notice the people who are gonna try to do something, so kind of just stay away from those guys. Yeah, dude, that's got to be that's got to be that it's got to be stressful for for a kid growing uh, up. Definitely, because uh, I was always taking the you know the the train or the bus on my own, and then I had my little brothers with me, and uh, usually when I had my brothers with me too, like had to watch out for them as well. But as I grew up, went to college and you would get the, my brothers got it worse, you know, like once I was out of the picture, that's when they would get bullied the, the worst. Or my brother got robbed three times on the train and uh, beat up two on the train. So, yeah. Jeez, that's fucked up. And my little baby brother got maced. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, like, it, yeah. Damn, and what are they up to now? Um, they so still in Chicago? Brother, yeah, they're still in Chicago. I mean, all my family's still there. I'm the only one out here alone. <laughs> but uh, they're um, my little brother. He's actually working for my dad uh, in the Willis Tower. Uh, so my dad started his little uh, tech company, and uh, he's always been in IT. And so... Um, my little brother kind of follows in his footsteps and now he's working for my dad there. Um, they're doing a lot of computer repairs. They actually work on the pay, payment machines too that uh, 
then uh, where you kind of like, I guess where you pay, get a ticket, go all the way up to the top. Um, and so, yeah, he, they do a lot of that IT work and, and programming and stuff there for the building. Um, my other, oh yeah, definitely. So like when I go visit, I get to go get a free tour of the, you know, the, the worst, oh, I, I like to call it Sears Tower, you know, it's the original name. <laughs> But, yeah, uh, the Willis Tower. <laughs> um, but my middle brother, he's he was doing some like uh, he was in the pharmacy for a while um, as like a farm tech. I guess he didn't like it, so he kind of just dropped out of school, and now he's trying to find his own business, like his own way, I guess. Uh, so I think he's he's he does a lot of odd jobs. So he was. He's working as like a salesperson for a couple phone companies for the most part. Um, but I think right now he's doing like Uber, you know, so. <laughs> nice. That's cool. No, I mean, you, you know, you get how you live. I mean, yeah. um, so that's, that's what's up. Um, but I, I guess bringing it back to you, uh, I know that you, you went to school with me, you know, we, you went to Purdue for uh, electrical engineering technology, right? Yeah. And I also know you as this creative person, you know, you do music and you, you were used to rap and stuff and, and uh, now you do video, videos and stuff like that. So like, when did you realize that you had that creative side and when did you like, was there a, like a push and pull from the academic, like technical side? Um, so it was actually, I guess, growing up, uh, my dad was really into music, uh, himself. So he had a studio too. And, uh, I had an uncle who lived below me, um, and, uh, they would always make music and all that. Um, so I would watch my, my dad, he would try to teach me like guitar, piano or whatever, but, um. I think I, at that point, I took a negative side to it, you know, because it was kind of like, you know, he was always there with the homies and they were, you know, drinking and all that. So um, my mom was always kind of like, oh, don't do this, don't do that. That's not a good look, you know, so, or just like, oh, he's always, you know, drinking and this, this and that. And then it would have like negative consequences at the end. So just kind of looked at it as a negative thing, but I always... Uh, wanted to be like uh, this like rock star singer, you know, lead lead singer of a rock band. But uh, nobody, I guess nobody took me serious. Uh, and I guess I didn't take myself too serious either. So I didn't know anybody who played drums or guitar who could eat, you know, could even do that. So, um, you know, I just kind of dabbled with it here and there. And then uh, it was actually when I went to college, um, my, my parents actually split up and everything. So, um, my dad had a, you know, pretty well built studio and, um, I kind of like found that passion when I was like a freshman in college, you know, I just found myself like, man, you know, like I'm away from home and I have a studio there and I found myself like writing, like, you know, and I'm like, oh, I could do like rap and stuff. And. So that's where it picked up, actually, because I, I just probably missed home and I wanted to do music and all that. Nice. And so you while, while you're doing that, you're, you're going to school for electrical engineering and stuff. Right. And yeah, that, that was kind of a, a tough process, too, because I was definitely focused more on school, the school side. Um, so... When I did have freedom, like I, my dad got me these like tools. He got me like a little keyboard and a little beat machine. And um, so I had my free time, I would try to learn it. And uh, I guess I definitely picked up on it more my sophomore year when I went to, um, well, I guess it was sophomore going into junior year um, when I was working as an intern for Boeing in Texas. And uh, I was kind of alone out there, so I definitely just ended up buying this whole set of mini miniature studio stuff, and I just started going at it every week. I would have this new 
Steve song. It wasn't the best, but it was definitely like, like you know, just the beginning sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, going to college, you know, people don't think about it too much, but going to college from, for me, from, you know, I was in Northwest, I'm from Northwest Indiana, so, um, so not too far from you, but right. my experience it was that, you know, growing up super Mexican household, super Mexican family, and really the first person to go away to college and so so I mean school obviously is hard but then you're there's a culture shock and there's kind of this loneliness sometimes this otherness that sometimes you know getting away from that these creative outlets can be can be a solace for that is that something that you experienced um definitely yeah that was definitely um it definitely helped me cope a lot uh, especially like i said i was out in texas by myself and uh i was living with this like 50 year old lady uh while i was uh <laughs> like while i was interning for boeing and so she was cool she was a cool lady um but she was like a hairstylist and she was drinking every night she had her own parties every night she was she was wild but um I was just there, you know, I had no friends. I didn't even have a car either. So like, I just picked up, went to the, the guitar center, picked up a bunch of stuff. And that's where, you know, I, I killed a lot of time there. Um, and yeah, it was, it was definitely like helpful. Nice. How did you, how did you end up with that lady? Was it like Craigslist or something? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was funny too, cause uh, like it was it was last minute um, where I got the internship, and uh, my mom was like, "Oh, what do we do? Like, we don't we don't even know anybody out there. We don't know how this works." And uh, I guess I ran out of um, uh, options, uh, cause I, it was a deadline where I could have signed up and they would have gave me housing, but I missed that deadline, and so. Um, we were just running around trying to figure it out. And um, my mom just looked up on Craigslist and then we, we Skyped her and we like interviewed her that way and she seemed cool. So my mom was like, okay, well, I'm gonna trust you with my son and all that. And <laughs> and she's like, oh, I'll take good care of him. And yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Is there any like crazy stories from, from her, like her parties or anything? Uh, well, also that's another thing. So she was a haircut stylist and she had this very really creative outlet too. So she did a lot of art painting and sculpture design. So uh, that's why she would go to her garage every night and just play music and start sculpting and painting and stuff. So uh, she never really cooked either. So I would go and like cook, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm hungry after work. And then she's already starting up and then you hear all this noise she's playing music loud and then you'll start hearing um voices you know like oh where you know like dude like every other night she was bringing in a new dude and just a couple of nights she'd hear the room over you know squeaky squeaky like you know <laughs> <laughs> she was a wild woman dude <laughs> man that's that's what's up that's that's a kind that's a that's a life for a yeah. lady, you know, power to her for that. That's dope. Yeah, so I mean, I was definitely like, um, at that point, it was it was just kind of like, oh, like you're you're like a homie, I guess you're like cool because then I guess we could talk about whatever because she's just like open and like you know, and so so then she took me out a couple nights with her and her friends to go um, to the clubs and stuff, and she, they would pick up. They would pick up a bunch of young guys. It was, it was wild. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just awful. like, Ugh. and then uh, another night, um, like she took me to a couple of her friends' house because a lot of her friends were pretty wealthy, um, and so they had these big old houses, and we'd go out there and uh, just hang out and drink or whatnot. And um, then her. Uh, friends were just like over talking like oh have you ever tried getting you know with milo and she's like 
she's like, oh, I can't do that. Like, I know his mom and he's a good kid. No, I, he's like my son. Like, he's like, I can't, no. Oh, and I was just there like, uh, this is awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's, that's funny. So, I mean, that's like, that, those are one of those times where you could, that's kind of invaluable experiences. Like everyone else who gets the standard corporate housing just okay. lives you know just lives with another you know you know whatever rich white kid from another university and it's just kind of you know the standard so that's like that's that's an experience that that is so different for for an intern and it's that's that's actually kind of that's kind of dope oh definitely <laughs> it was it was definitely a memorable and then i kept in contact and my mom kept in contact with her for a while you know just in case they were going back out to texas but yeah. <laughs> well, they were, they were cool people. <laughs> That's what's up. And so, like, as far as, like, the internship, are you liking liking the work that you're doing as an intern? Um, Actually, that's kind of what, um, like, the reason I kind of stayed was uh, at first, at least when I started, um, I was working in IT, right, for Boeing, and um, I was creating, well, I was working alongside with a electrical team. So I get to like see their wiring diagrams and all that. And then I was um, working on a uh, like this project where it would take these codes from the wiring program um, and they can send it out to um, to their customers without, without uh, sending in like those like those, um, those, I guess the numbers for, they were in the, the sheet that they would send out. They had to take them out because they were like um, um, private numbers for the company. And so uh, it was literally like, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of lines to go and look at. And so I had to create this program where I would drop it in, in the, in the, in the program and it would scrap all that out uh, immediately and then they could send the file over so it would, it would save them like two hours per document um and then it so that was pretty cool and so i developed the whole like user interface and everything like that and that kind of had me like wow you know like i like this this kind of work so i stuck with it um and come to find out when i came to Long Beach, I had to do, um, as an intern the following year, I was uh, like a project manager and that, that job sucked. <laughs> but uh, so then I went back in IT full time and uh, it turns out not all IT positions were the same. So that one also sucked, but I was in Charleston then too. Um, so these are uh, different internships or? So the one in Texas was the one where I created the one application and I thought mm -hmm. I'd be doing that thing or doing that sort of type, that type of work, like, you know, throughout uh, being in IT. Um, so then I told him, hey, I want to be out in Long Beach because, you know, uh, David was out here. So I was like, oh, you know, I get to hang out with David. So they were like, the only position we have is project management. And I said, all right, I guess that wouldn't hurt. Let's see what it's like. <laughs> so they sent me out here in IT doing that uh, the following year and it was it was bad but at least I got to have fun you know <laughs> yeah I mean yeah you and David were were super tight I, I literally almost never saw you without seeing David at the same time back at Purdue <laughs> yeah. yeah and uh yeah I mean well, we started off um with the what was that the AIMIT program or something uh boot camp and so we were roommates and then we just had all the same classes together. And then I guess, you know, we just stuck together. So <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. And so like, yeah. And project management sounds like so cool to, to, to youngsters, but what I've experienced is project management is most of the time, uh, sending reports and like production and like, uh, data and like, reporting to someone another guy that has you know what whatever vp or is that kind of what you were experiencing as a project management 
Yep. Uh, definitely had to send out daily reports and then evening reports, report up to the my upper management, and uh, then go and ask some people, hey, how's this going, man? And, um, so yeah, that was definitely it, and it it was just not my thing. <laughs> It was not yeah. technical enough for me, you know. So yeah, it's just yeah, it's busy work. And did you have to do like invoices or anything like that? Um, or... no, no. I think my my lead who kind of showed me the ropes on how to do all that was probably doing all the harder stuff. So oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Project management uh, can be a bitch. So 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 you went back to IT for your next internship. Yeah. Or was that after you graduated? Oh, uh, so I yeah, I didn't have any more internships after that. So I went full time, and um, in in IT because uh, after that internship ended, they uh, contacted me. Hey, would you like to sign up for this uh, program? It's for like elite people in IT, and you have a GPA and this is and that. So I was like, okay, for sure. Um, so then, yeah, I signed up for that, and the salary seemed pretty good and everything. And they were like, "Oh yeah, you're gonna be out in California and and all that, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to move like to two other locations uh, just to like test out, you know." And I'm like, "Okay, that that sounds really cool, you know. I get to live in three different cities, and then finally choose one city to live in after after you know after all." So. I was like, this sounds like a pretty good program. And then uh, once I like signed and it was time to like, maybe two months before it was time to start, um, they were like, hey, we actually can't send you out to Seattle or California. Um, you're gonna have to stick to um, this, like the Southeast region. And uh, we're gonna send you to Charleston instead. And from there you might be able to uh, like work in Seattle, you might be able to go to Seattle and California. Um, and I was like, okay, I guess I could do one year in Charleston, no problem. So I was working, working there, and then they were like, hey, we got bad news for everybody. Uh, budgets are being cut, so you're gonna have to stay here for the next three years in this program. <laughs> and then I, I automatically just started sending emails. I was like, no, like forget that. Like I'm not staying here. Like. I mean, it was a cool city, you know. Um, it was definitely, uh, it was nice, but it just wasn't my wasn't my type, you know. I, maybe when I retire and become like 80 years old, I'll go out there, <laughs> retire, but not for me. It's like um, an old city, like old, yeah, old city, right? Like a lot yeah. of old people. Yep. But That's I mean, it was beautiful out there for sure. Yeah, and, I've heard uh, good things about the like beaches and stuff are pretty underrated. Oh, yeah really nice <laughs> but um yeah after the like halfway through the first year i told them hey like send me to uh, california luckily uh there was one person in the same program who who left to move full-time with his girlfriend in seattle uh, or st louis i think it was and so they're like hey well we do have an opening here in the in long beach but um we're not gonna relocate you you have to do it yourself and i was just like and they were like, you have one day to decline because now we put your name there, you know? And I was like, dang, like. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> dude, boy. Yeah, <laughs> they did me dirty, huh? <laughs> yeah, dude, they did me dirty, man. That's fucked up. Because, <laughs> they gave, yeah, they gave me a stipend, they moved me and everything, and then next thing you know, they're like, no, we're, we're not going to do it this time. This is all on you. And I was like, but, like, you know, that's why I signed up for it because, you know, I was going to do that. Uh you know, moving around and all that, but um, but it was worth yeah. it to Ooh. to go ahead and invest in that, in that move. Yeah, I think it was definitely worth it. Um, yeah, so I just got had to get rid of everything and then just drove straight down uh, with my cousin, and it was a good time. <laughs> That's crazy. Did did you have any family out there in in California? Uh, yeah, so when I got here, my grandma kept telling me, she's like, oh, I have an older brother out there, you know, go visit him, go visit him, go visit him, and, you know, I, for a while, I just kind of like, you know, I don't know these people, so I didn't really bother, <laughs> and then, uh, so one day, I was just like, all right, you know, I don't, 
I don't really know anybody out here, you know, like, other than David, but he had his own thing going. So I was just like, all right, let's see how these people are and go meet them. And yeah, I, I met them. They were in their like early 80s. And so it's her first brother out of like 10 siblings, her oldest. And um, so then I got to meet two other cousins that I didn't even know I like I think they're considered second cousins and I didn't even know about <laughs> and uh yeah they're pretty cool too but yeah so now I, now I visit them every so often and just hang out with them and, but that's like apparently the closest thing I have to family out here is through my grandma um so yeah that's what's up so before we get into the California chapter, what was the what was like the best and the worst part of uh, North Carolina? Or South, South Carolina? Um, or South Carolina, my bad. So the best part, I I did like um, I did like because I told you I had a lot of animals, so I did like the nature side. I like the I like to go fishing and all that. Um, so I got to go to the beach and fish, or uh, some of the neighbors took me out on a boat. I did catch like this uh, giant um, red snapper, I think it was. It was, it was pretty big. Uh, I might be over-exaggerating, you know, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, those, those are some highlights. Uh, also, hurricane season was pretty cool. I mean, it seemed scary at first, but in the end, it was like, wow, you know, I got to experience that. And uh, my car was like, or the water was like all the way up to like the top of my tire. And uh, had to walk out, walk my dog out in that, you know. So it was it was a, a different experience. It was cool, the mountains and the, just nature and all that. And the beaches too, really nice. Um, but there was some like downsides too. It's, uh, it was like there were some very racist people out there. <laughs> That's one of That's them. That's what I heard. Was, yeah. <laughs> so there was a couple nights where, you know, I'd go out and then Trunk, you know, trunk racist people, and then you know I'm out there and just like you know words being thrown around, and you know just like what, and you know me being like I guess a bigger person, I'm just like uh, I'm not gonna you know deal with this today, just walk away. Um, so that was that was some of that, and then there was another thing that kind of like flipped my experience upside down. Um, you know, of course the beginning I went paddle boarding and I had no experience out in the water like I'm not even a swimmer I'm not gonna lie so I just took the risk and followed all the other interns and I was like all right yeah this sounds cool you know definitely gonna go paddle boarding so we signed you know our life away and <laughs> they gave me a paddle board I fell off like three times and uh the first time I fell off I was like freaking out and I had this life vest on and I'm like dude I'm on the ocean I'm like gosh you know and next thing you know I'm like grabbing the board and I'm like oh I could walk I could walk in the water like it's not even that deep right now <laughs> right here, <you> know? <laughs> so then, uh, but like towards the end on our way back in there was this like storm um that came a little early and so the water was getting wavy and I'm already like I couldn't balance on the board. So I fell off like a few more times and uh, they, said, they said on the waiver, hey, watch out for uh, oyster beds and all that because you can get cut up pretty badly. And I fell off the thing and I fell right onto an oyster bed and I like have some scars here. And then I had a big one on my leg. And uh, from there, like, I mean, I was, I was kind of laughing about it when it happened and I came out, I couldn't walk. But people were freaking out. Like, I had a really big gash. You could see my bone and everything. And uh, we went to the hospital, and they said, uh, oh, we're not going to close it up because it's going to grow from the inside out um, because uh, it could, if we steal it, we, it might have an infection later. Then we'll definitely have to cut your leg off. Of course, I didn't want that. But oh my gosh. It, it took a whole year to close up. Holy shit, dude! That yeah. is crazy. Yeah, so you just so, walked around with a bloody leg the whole the whole year? Yeah, I mean, for the first like two months, it was a lot of blood and liquid coming out. Definitely um, changed my bandage every hour, and dude, those bandages were not 
they were not cheap. Jeez. Because <laughs> so, I had to buy the rolls, and I used up like a roll for three, two hours. <laughs> but, um, yeah, eventually it got to a point where, you know, I just had to cover up just so, because sometimes it would rain, and I'd have to walk half a mile into work, like we would park at the security gate and then we had to walk half a mile into work and a couple times the hurricanes or you know it was just really bad raining we had to walk in and my legs and shoes would get wet so um that was definitely like that kind of sucked too especially with my open wound and all and it was hard to walk and uh, after that i kind of like had to uh, regain strength on my left leg and then I started to have back problems from my left leg because of my muscles didn't heal properly. And so, yeah, so that was the only downside. But, I mean, <laughs> Damn. I'm through it here now. <laughs> Jeez, dude, man, I'm sorry you had to go through that. Yeah. Man, so, so by the time you're leaving to, yeah, by the time you're leaving to Cali, you're like, I'm the fuck out of here. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> That's what's up. And yeah, so I'm glad that healed up. I hope you're, you know, I hope back, back problems are a bitch, man. You you start them and then it, and it's like, it feels like it's always there. Do you still have issues? Um. Yeah, I mean, I still, like, it's still the same leg too. Um. So yeah, I still have issues. They're not terrible, but it's like one week, I thought, like, I don't know what was happening. I just thought um, maybe it was my leg, but I guess I, I had a pinched nerve from one of the muscles being too tight. And um, I would just walk, and literally my left leg would just give out, and I would fall. Oh and I was God. just like, I was just like, dude, what the heck happened? Like, I felt my leg, and just for a split second, I didn't. And it was just like spaghetti and boom. So Jeez. then it just got worse over the week, and literally, like, bawling my eyes I'll never feel, felt pain so bad and uh, I went to the like the chiropractor and they were saying dude this is the worst like uh, pinched nerve pain I've ever seen in my life so I had to go through a few sessions and uh, massaging was helping but they had to do like uh, some like electrotherapy or something and uh, shock the muscle to loosen up and uh, ever since then, they're just like, just keep stretching it, you know, like. <laughs> so when I, once they start feeling it, I'm like, oh, I'm back to stretching, you know. <laughs> That's yeah. Well, so so now you're you don't feel it so bad, like you have you just stretching and it goes away, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know some stretches; it'll help out and definitely helps. That's what's up? Damn, so you show up to to uh to Cali, like what how how are you feeling finally moving to Cali? Uh well I felt definitely I felt relieved, but oh man, it it took forever trying to find a place to even because I was like paying twelve hundred and uh for this nice spot, you know, it was like eight hundred square foot. Dude, I, they had like free car washes, they had a pool gym, uh wow. park free parking, uh like they had everything there, and um, I think they even had a spa too. And uh, so I was like paying twelve hundred for that, and um, then I come here, and like I couldn't even find. I mean, I found some things for twelve hundred, but they were like, "Oh, here's a three hundred square foot uh, closet you could stay in." <laughs> so I was like dude, what the heck? And I had to move myself, so I didn't have any relocation assistance. So um, they wouldn't help me with, like, uh, some of the, the housing and all that. Jeez. Um, so eventually I found something that was, like, reasonable and that accepted large dogs, too, because uh, that was another one where, like, I could afford a lot of places um, at a decent rate, um, but they didn't accept dogs. Or at least some big dogs. Dang. Oh, dude, yeah, two dogs. <laughs> I just noticed. I was like, yeah. oh, your other one changed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's loose. Hey, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I couldn't find um, a place for big dogs, and it was just really expensive. And I finally got here, and I was supposed to be roommates with David, but uh, I think he changed up last minute because he was dating this girl, and she was like, no, just move in with me, you know, like. 
she was actually dating a sugar mom right now. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so um, she was like, hey, just move in with me. And so he kind of just like back, like backed off and I moved on the place. And I was like, all right, well, at least I got a place because uh, I had my car full of stuff. And yeah, so after I got here, I had to find, buy my own refrigerator and stove because they didn't supply it. And I think that's when my back got really bad is when I pulled up the refrigerator all the way too. And I got it up here. And yeah, I just, that was the end for my back. <laughs> Jeez, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, after that, it was just kind of like, it was, you know, it was good. Uh, definitely like Long Beach gave me the, it was like a mini Chicago. So I was like, oh man, this is definitely better than uh, where I was. <laughs> That's what's up. Yeah. So yeah, I should have looked it up, but Long Beach, how would like, all I know is like LA and then San Francisco. Like, where is it in relation to those? Um, so Long Beach, I guess, is considered like a suburb. Um, but it's driving without traffic. It's about thirty-five minutes away. Um, with traffic, I mean, you might make it there within an hour. Um, so to LA. Yeah, to LA. Okay. So about maybe twenty-five miles, twenty twenty-five miles away. Uh, so definitely not too far. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. And so you you're going to the similar position, or did you move up, or like what's like in Boeing, like? Oh uh, yeah, that? so I was still in that program in IT, and they put me as a developer down here um, in IT. So I stayed there for about a year and a half, and I just I was like I kept telling my boss I'm like, dude, this. Like, he was pretty cool, so he was, like, we talked, like, we were homies. I was, like, man, like, I don't like this job. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, it's kind of boring. And he's, like, yeah, it definitely is. He's, like, if I were you, if I were younger, there's, there's a lot of cooler jobs within, uh, within the company. And uh, so he got me on this new program that started, and I kept telling him, I was, like, you know what, just put me as engineer. I want to see what it's like. Um, and so he put, put me on this uh, avionics group that just started here in Long Beach and um, ever since like we would do Python scripting um, so we have to create this Python script that would uh, run simulations uh, on the on the cockpit of the aircraft so um, I had to learn a lot about the aircraft and learn a lot of like I mean I already knew how to code but I had to um, learn like all the software and stuff that we were using and yeah and that ever since then that was pretty cool i definitely like the coding part but i mean it's still corporate it's you know a, a lot of times you'll still you know you just get get hassled by you know the team and the and the, and the boss and all that but other than that it's a, it's a pretty cool job i like it yeah, that's what's up, man. That sounds like a like, as far as you know, coding goes. That sounds like what like one of the coolest applications for it, right? Um, and so what I'm hearing a lot, and what I've experienced in some of you know corporate corporations and um, jobs is there's a lot of politics involved, yeah. and there's people people that just like to put their stamp on things, whether it makes something better or not. And there's people that are kissing ass. There's people that are, uh, that like take, take credit for your work. There's, you know, there's all these different dynamics and um, who gets the, the, the promotion and this and that and the other. Is that, is, is some of that in play right here? Cause that's what it, I feel like there's some of that coming up. Oh, dude, there's a lot of that, and uh, that, that's another thing is I, I don't play politics, so I'm the I'm the guy on the, the end of the stick. They're like, eh, Milo's here, you know, he just, he's doing great work, but he doesn't play politics, so we're not going to throw him a bone, you know, we're just, he's there for the ride, like, he's, like, you know, they're using me sort of thing, so, um, but yeah, there's definitely a lot of that going on. <laughs> Yeah, dude, and it seems, you know, I don't know if 
I'm just wearing these glasses all the time as far as the way that I see things, but it seems more likely when it's a person of color that, you know, for me, whether it's politics or whether it's the work, you're going to have to work twice as hard. So you, you're going to have to kiss ass extra hard or you're going to end, or you're going to have to work extra hard because otherwise they're going to look at you. And I've seen this in, in the companies that I've had, whether it's because I'm brown or not, that they see me as less intelligent or less capable or less this and that or the other, is that do you feel like that is a person of color coming from from that kind of that space? Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to say yeah, like you're saying, like oh, you're wearing the glasses, and like man, you keep cleaning those glasses, you're gonna keep seeing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah, that's what happens. Because uh, I definitely had a group of uh, you know. Um, and I guess, I mean, now that I think about it, I'm probably one of the only brown people there because when, when I first started, there was a couple other like Latinas and Latinos there, and now they're just like, oh, I'm fed up with this, and they just bounce right away. Um, but I just have the feeling that like that's kind of like that same thing happens everywhere else. So I'm like, well, I just stick around for a little while, you know, and see what happens. But, um, yeah, definitely, like, I got to work twice as hard. And even for my current program, they're like, uh, my boss, he's a Salvadorian. And I'm like, dude, he's he's not a great manager. But um, he, uh, he he's more of a friend than a good manager. And uh, he literally listens to whatever the upper management says. So if he's if they tell them, tell him, hey, you can't make everyone look good. You have to make some people look bad. He'll go and... Um, of course, like the people of color, I feel like get more of the, the bat under the stick, you know? And so there's been times where like, you know, this new kid is, you know, not, not colored and comes in brand new and they're getting all the raises, promotions and everything. You're like, dude, like <laughs> what's going on here? Like I developed this application. I wowed the whole team. I even had the director go, wow, this is cool, you know? And people are using my product now on the team. And so where's my credit for that? You know, like I still haven't gotten credit for that. And, and then every day, like every time I would talk to him, like, oh, so how's that, you know, promotion coming along, you know, just like, you know, trying to see what he says, you know, but I already know, know it's like BS coming out of his mouth. And uh, I'm like, man, a good manager would definitely like put, put a good word in for me, but he, he hasn't done that. I can tell so um, yeah yeah like one of the things the most important things a manager is supposed to do is stand up for the good people when right. it's not when it's not showing through so yeah so yeah def they definitely take care of uh well they definitely let the colored people sit back and eventually they'll you know they're like oh you've been here 10 years well finally give you a little raise <laughs> the leftovers yeah, yeah or, or you'll get sick of it and, and you're gonna dip or you'll dip like the other people right right that's but like okay. sorry no you go ahead. i was saying but yeah a lot um a lot of times they would dip and then the company would be like hey no no don't leave we, we want you we need you we'll match whatever the company's doing and then they kind of just said, you know what, like, no, you guys need to learn a lesson. I'm out of here sort of thing. Um, but I mean, I've been, I've been applying to for other places, but. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, yeah, you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place sometimes, but, um, yeah. but that's, that's another one of those things that like people don't, as far as like executives at, at corporations, like some of their arguments of like why they don't have people of color is we can't find them and, or they end up leaving for somewhere else. But like if you're not creating an environment where a person of color can feel comfortable staying for the long term or promote them or like accept them or like give them the props they deserve, then, then that's on you. And, and, and that's, 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 racism that's you know structural racism in it in you know even 
it's re, you know re, repetitive and reciprocal and it's never ending right it's a cycle but hey i mean it sounds like you're doing some cool shit as far as like coding and like code people don't think about coding as yeah. as a creative like exercise oh, do, you yeah. fe- do you feel like yeah do you feel like you're kind of, like it's a creative like you're painting this this picture of like of numbers and letters and in and, and this different language Oh, definitely. Sometimes I'll uh, like I'll show people like, oh, dude, like check this out. I've done, and they have no coding experience, or you know, they're not even interested. They're like, dude, I don't, I don't even know what you're doing. And I'm like, to me, it's like art, you know. And I'm like, oh, this is like great. But I have the same feeling when I'm like, you know, soldering some electrical components together too. And I'm just like, oh man, you know, I'm making this cool little, this little, cool little thing. So. Yeah, definitely. It's I think it's definitely a creative outlet. Yeah, dude, it's 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 really got to be a like a symphony as far as the code, like because you get one little like I'll call it note, right? Because I'm relating it to music. One little yeah. note or one little letter of that code wrong, and it's just gonna it's gonna be off, or it's not gonna work, right? right so right. you have to get every single piece, but then you have to structure it in a way where it's going to do exactly what you want to do because you change, you know, one section versus the other, it's going to, it's not going to work. It's going to do it backwards or it's going to, you know, the calculations will be wrong or what, what have you. So. Definitely. It changes, it changes everything too and changes life, you know, like you never know what kind of uh, thing you're going to make next, you know, or the next thing you know, it's going to be out there. Everyone's going to be using it, you know, TikTok, TikTok, Bitcoin, all that stuff. So there's definitely some, you know, creative people out there. And you wouldn't, I mean, you'd just think, oh, that guy's just a big nerd or something. I don't know. But yeah, definitely. Yeah, dude. And so, so that brings me to the now. Like, you're, you obviously are still working at Boeing and doing your coding thing. And, how are you how are you going about your uh your uh you know video editing you know practices um so i mean i guess there was a moment where i would kind of have this routine before the whole covid thing um so i would just you know go to work go to the gym then have like a little free time uh work on you know projects personal projects and try to, you know, because I also have this thing engraved in my head, like, oh, once you reach 30, it's too late, you know, sort of thing. So I'm like, I can get on it now, you know. <laughs> um, but I kind of, as I as I do it more, I just kind of feel like, well, I don't, I don't find that to be totally true, you know. I can still do my do my creative outlet and get there, uh, even if it takes till the year 40, you know. Um, but I kind of slowed down during the whole first year of the COVID thing. And it was hard because like I'm working uh, like at my desk station all day and I don't, uh, and it's, it's also my, my studio. So it's like, I'm sitting here all day working and I don't have a way to like get away from my desk. And so by that time I'm like, ah, uh, like, you know what? I wish I could have my work separate from my, my hobby area um so then it just took a little while to kind of pick that back up and uh uh, start working on hobbies again um it just just took a lot of dedication (laughs) but um yeah like now um i just i guess i said that i'm tired of being tired you know like like i'm tired of you know, hearing it, hearing the boss, like bossing around and this and that. So I'm going to turn, turn my dreams into goals, you know, sort of thing and make it happen. So I just picked up my camera again and said, all right, you know, we're, I'm going to take off one day and this is, this is how I'm going to (laughs) start. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And that's, you know, that, that whole workstation thing is so real. I, um, I was in tech, you know, I was in technical sales for five years. I was, um, you know, I sold, uh, my last job I was selling bridges, right? So like being in sales, you go out 
and you're out working, you're out meeting people, shaking hands, uh, telling them the whole spiel about how your bridge is better, and then you come home. So my my work home balance was always remote. Like I was always remote, remotely working, but I spent so much time in other people's offices that that by the time I got home, finished up work, I could use the same space um, for to practice drawing um, because it took me a while, you know, it took me a long time. But when COVID hit, like I was sitting at my desk, like I was doing this, I was doing pres- like sales calls like this. Right. And then after work, I was like, I can't, I can't do that here because, or, or like, because I, I'm in the same mind space. So I learned how to like protect areas. Like I could, I also kept myself from working at the couch because if I started working at the couch, then at the end of the day, I couldn't relax at the couch because I wanted to be working. Right. So then, so there's like these little things. Um, so when COVID hit, what I would do is like, I would change up my station. I would move this and that and that. And now I'm in my creative station. I don't know if that might help, like uh, just changing certain things or working from a different space and then move into this other space when you're creative. That's, right. that's helping, that's helped me a lot as far as, you know, that kind of uh, mindset goes. Oh, de- definitely. I, I've done that too over the, at least a year and a half. I was like changing up my space a few times and then I finally got it down to the point where, yeah, I could push my, like, uh, my work aside. Like I even got two separate or one separate monitor for my work and just kind of literally push it aside and now I'm back to, you know, I can do my thing. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That's what's up. Um, so I saw the music video that you made. What kind of like, is, is that what you want to be doing? Like music video, that kind of stuff? Or what kind of like things do you want to work on? Um, well, so that's a, that was another uh, thing too. So the, the video that you saw was a rapper named Ghost. And uh, he's actually an ex-gang member. And uh, uh, he found out about my studio and through another like neighbor and so at the time I didn't know he was like, you know, a gang member or whatever. Um, so yeah, I invited, uh, invited him up and I was like, you know, I can um, use this time too. Cause sometimes you'll you hit a brick wall and you're like, I, I don't know how to, you know, like um, get out of that. So maybe I use that practice on somebody else. And so he came through and, you know, I'll just go and, um, practice my skills, you know, editing, mixing, mastering, all that in the, in the studio. And then he's like, hey, you know how to work a camera? And I was like, I was like, well, I've had the passion to do it. Um, and I've been meaning to do my own music video. So um, I was like, yeah, I mean, I have a camera that I just picked up and he was just like, okay, um, let's, shoot a, let's shoot a video. And so I was like, uh, oh, all right, you know, same thing. Like, I just kind of, like, he was, like using me to help get his uh, dreams out there. And I was like using him also to uh, practice, you know? So um, that was actually like, I guess my second video technically. And um, I didn't have the best computer set up to run the software. So that was definitely, I was learning a lot about like Adobe Premiere and everything. And uh, so it took, it took forever to get that video out there, but he had a deadline and we, we managed to do it. And, uh, then instantly he had another video idea. And then right after that, he got, he actually went back to jail. (laughs) Oh man. (laughs) (laughs) uh, Yeah. (laughs) But it was, it was actually, um, I guess it wasn't his fault. They uh, convicted him for uh, somebody else, um, uh, like false accusation, and uh, he was going to serve life this time. But it turns out it wasn't even him. Uh, and he, after two, like three, three years, actually, he uh, got he was free. So <laughs> wow. Yeah, I don't know how you prove that one, but. <laughs> It was, it, it was somebody else from the same gang with the same tattoo on their face. And so somebody was just like, oh, yeah, it's it's that guy right there, I guess. And 
and the other guy that actually did it said, no, it wasn't me, you know, like. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, so, um, so, yeah, then uh, I just picked up the camera again, and it was kind of like good timing, I guess, and uh, so I, his new um, music video is on the way, and um, also last year I did record a couple other videos for myself that I haven't finished putting together. Um, Cause like I said, sometimes you get stuck at a wall and then you just go back and look at it and you're like, oh, okay, maybe I can do this and to make it better, you know? Um, so. Yeah, dude, I have, uh, that, I have that experience with like drawings or paintings. Like I'll, I'll get it halfway done and then I'll be like, God, uh, I, I sometimes get in my head. Like I'll, I'll be like, well, this, this is, this just sucks. Yeah. And not only does it suck, I'm not having fun anymore. And I'm gonna start something else, and I'll go start something else, and I'll t- the same thing will happen with that, and then I'll start something else, and then on the third or fourth thing, then I'll be like, oh, I guess I could go back to that first one, and then I finish the first one, and then it's like, oh damn, this turned out pretty dope. So, so, yeah. <laughs> and then so together. Yeah, I'll do that loop. Um, but yeah, man, it's a great time to be a video editor. You know everyone's looking for for video editors and and there's like the future of it and the cur- and the present is, is pretty nuts you know you mentioned tiktok earlier have you dabbled in in that i haven't yet so mm-hmm. I, I know i need to get into it and i'm not really um i'm trying to program myself i guess to get in the mindset of being on camera and so that's what a lot of time or for the longest time it took me a while to be like man I, I know I gotta I want to do music videos for myself at least and other videos and like I need to get in front of the camera and not be shy so um I definitely have, am a lot better with that but yeah I still have been kind of pushing that back <laughs> yeah I mean and and you know don't 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 be too hard on yourself because I know some you know sometimes we can get in our head and be like, this is what I should and what I'm supposed to be doing. And then you beat yourself up because you haven't done it yet. Um, or because you tried it and then, you know, whatever, it didn't come out the way that you wanted it. But, but like, it's, it's all a growing process. I have the same, I have a similar issue about being on camera and, and especially like if I recorded on my own, like, like me and you talking is, is, (laughs) It's chill. Yeah. But me sitting with a camera in front of my face and saying the things <laughs> that I want to say, I'm like, I'll be in mid sentence and be like, I look weird as fuck. And then I'll like then I'll and then I'll be saying the dumbest shit and like I'll be stuttering and all that stuff. So it's trust me, like, don't be too hard on yourself and you know, just the if that's what you want to do eventually and it's gonna and it and if it's a slow process fuck it it's a slow process man be chill like you said you know if it takes till you're 40 or 50 you'll still be young at that age yeah which i don't think it'll take that long but yeah, yeah definitely not <laughs> by the way i turned 30 this year so oh man okay, well happy uh late birthday <laughs> wow no i i i turned 30 in november i haven't turned yet oh you turn oh okay well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll be wishing you a happy 30th birthday then. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. Um, so, yeah, like, so we're we're young. Like, I'm, I quit, you know, I don't know if I said this, but I quit my job to move here. Um, right. And, you know, this is the 30th year of my life. But, you know, the creative industries and the creative, like, outlook for the future is nuts. Um and I know me and you talked over message a little bit about like NFTs and stuff. Have you yeah. like delved into that and, and learned, uh, started learning about those? Um, I definitely, when it first uh, came out, I was definitely like um, doing a lot of research and all that. And uh, I was just like, but you know, it was still kind of like, what is an NFT? And even now, like you still just kind of wonder like, why why and how is this fit in in this space you know like why why is it that i'm buying something so expensive or not even expensive but why am i buying something that i can just look up on google search and see it there you know like (laughs) 
they're not even it's, it's there for you to look at but why am i even buying it just to say i own it or you know there's even other copies of it out there or you know like i at that point i don't even feel like i own something you know it just feels like i paid uh something or i paid a lot of money for something that that's virtual too you know so yeah but i mean it, it's a cool concept and it definitely um gives a lot of meaning to uh artwork and to uh, a lot of just art creative outlets to um give them more recognition and more power over their own content for sure um so i, I definitely like that idea about it and see see it going a long way from from there but at first it was just like man what what is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude it's 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 a little bit of a mental hurdle and you know as a as a person who codes that and who does creative stuff that's why I, I was pretty interested to get your you know outlook on it um especially like with the blockchain and and stuff like that um and that's essentially in the way that the way that i view it is like anything like our dollars are paper, right? So why why right. is it why does a piece of paper have that amount of value, right. or what or or a sneaker? It's just the leather, you know. Why does why does one sneaker versus a pay less sneaker, you know, have certain value? And it's just a matter of it's just a matter of what someone's going to pay for it. And something on the blockchain says this person paid this much for it. So that you, I can prove to you on this ledger. That, that this is <laughs> that this is what is worth, right? So, yeah. um, so yeah, uh, and then and then the the smart contracts. Uh, have you delved into the smart contract part of that NFT side? Um, I mean, I've looked into it, but no, I, I mean, I'm still not too familiar. Yeah, and essentially, the smart contract right now on the votes basic level is. It is a contract, right? But on the most basic level, the function is so that when I sell something to someone, someone else sells it to someone else, oh. I get 10%. Like it's written into there automatically that I get 10% back. But in theory, you could write a whole bunch of different stuff in there. You could say the second person also gets this. Or in this contract, um, if you buy this NFT, then you own rights to my house or to this property or to this you know you can be allowed into this um you know event or this conference and so like there's there's other like on the surface right now it's being used for jpegs and bullshit and there's definitely like this bubble i feel like but in the future i think there could be some cool stuff have you ever looked into have you ever thought about learning the coding language for all that shit yeah, my um, at least my dad's been telling me he's like, dude, like you, he's like you have the knowledge to do that, this and that, but I'm I'm just like, I do, and I just so much going on <laughs> that I just like I'll, I'll I'll even think about it, and I'm like, oh, I just you know need to make that time to dive into it deeper, and yeah, maybe I can do something like that because for a while I was when that whole NFT came uh, started coming out, I was like, oh, like like I haven't figured it out yet but I'm like you know as uh as an artist you can you know for a lot of those um um single artists out there um they can own rights and to every song you know and and sort of like you know just have that one-on-one -on -one contact with the, their audience and stuff so they won't have to deal with the middleman and get ripped off and they can automatically just you know share their content and also get what they deserve or what at least what the community thinks they deserve um so i was just like i was thinking about it and uh i think some other people kind of beat me to it <laughs> um but but yeah i mean it, it's still not clear at least for the music the music side um but I've seen some artists already throwing up uh, like exclusive content where it's like, oh, we've never released this album. So if you buy it, um, it'll be the only 
person to be able to hear it or own the actual like hard copy and uh, sort of thing. Yeah, dude. There's a lot of different ways, and there's a lot of different ways you could you could use it, and and it's still early. So like, if you say someone's beat you to it, like there, yeah. there's no you know there's there's that's that's totally okay, and also it's okay to be to kind of feel overwhelmed and just be like, like what like what the fuck is this? How do I do this? Because you know, it's it's gonna take take time because I'm I'm right. like delving into it slowly but surely and i've minted some things but i i really haven't sold that much i've only sold one thing and and what i'm finding is like there is a community in there but there's some politics in there there's some politics like oh we were like this is the crew that we're first this is the crew that we're second this is the crew that we're here and this is and so um, it can be, it's it's something to figure out. But anyway, if if it if it becomes something that, and I'll send you some stuff that like that um, that I saw were by musicians, okay, and, and uh, that they minted some stuff and they they're doing they're doing all right. Um, and there's this one girl in the Calif- in L.A. I think I'd have her name's Cass. I have to send you her account so you you can look into her stuff, but. But as far as like, you know, I know the NFTs are there and then, you know, working as, you know, working as a freelancer is over here and there's like all these different avenues you can take. You right. can even switch careers and go work for a company to, to do video editing. Like, what do you feel like you're, you're up until this point, what were you, what are you thinking your future is with, with this uh, creative side? Um, I mean, so I always just kind of envision myself like, well, yeah, working for myself and I, I do want to have like, uh, the opportunity to open up a couple businesses, you know, offer people job opportunities and things like that. Um, but I always envisioned like being able to have like a business that does like all the music and video production and then having one that, um, dives into, making um newer or better audio equipment um because I, I still like that electrical engineering side and i always like it always comes back to me like oh you know i can uh pick up you know some microcontrollers and i could program it to you know make sounds and this and that so it'd be cool to develop my own you know like hardware and so that i'm like you know once i get all the money for that then i can you know start developing that or you know find the people to help me build those ideas up um so i definitely like so like that you know technical side so i want to start a business like that and i guess after that who knows maybe just the common space for other creatives and you know the the coffee lovers and the beer drinkers just you know you, <laughs> you want to have a I mean, you know, already made, but you want to have a chocolate cherry beer, you know, and we have the place you can make it. I don't know, something like that. But, um, and then also, uh, I would like to have like, um, like non for profits too that would help, you know, the community and little kids kind of learning a lot of this, this stuff up and coming as they're growing up too. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely don't see myself working for, for my company for so long <laughs> just want to have my own my own business and just take off oh yeah dude that's what's up and you i feel like you're on your way you know it's just it's kind of like how they say you know how do you eat an elephant you know just a, just a bite at a time yeah. so um it's a little by little man and and i love that the i mean what it's not, like i love the whole you know non-for-profit stuff for kids I think especially for like people of color, the technical, the the resources for like technical and STEM are definitely not there. But also when you look at it, the resources for like the technical sides of art and creativity aren't there because, you know, you, you have some of these programs that are pretty intense and you need a pretty good computer um, to even to even run Photoshop or Premiere or right. whatever. 
Um, and like, I'm starting to see more and more the combination of STEM and art. Now they're putting it together and calling it STEAM. Have you heard of that? STEM and art, STEAM. Uh, no, I haven't heard of that. Yeah, like science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Um, yeah, like uh, Will I Am is a big proponent for it, and he does he does like fundraising for it. Okay. So, yeah, dude, that'd be pretty dope. You, you want to do that out in uh, Chicago? Definitely, I, I would love to take that um, back home, you know, too. And because uh, I always, you know, I always tell people, you know, eventually I'm gonna have that business, and I'm gonna work for myself, fly back and forth, uh, you know, home in LA and, you know, have my homes there, you know, <laughs> and uh, definitely would always thought about getting back. Uh, I mean, not only to to LA, because I, you know, starting to learn this whole community out here and it's not too far from where I grew up, you know, it's, it reminds me of home. So I uh, definitely want to give back to the community where I grew up and all that. And, um, yeah, because out, out there, I just remember growing up, they don't they don't teach you like, oh, you can become a doctor, this and that. They're just teaching you the minimal so that it's like they're training you to become the next haircut, the haircutter, barber, nail stylist or whatever, just low um, income jobs or whatever. They, you never sit there and think, oh, I could become, you know, a doctor or a lawyer or some, something like that or because I grew up, they didn't have anything technical, and I was always like, hey, why don't we have coding classes? And I remember bringing it up to, to like the principal and all that, and they're just like, yeah, so I would, I was definitely one of those kids who would help try to get that funding, but by the time we actually got the funding, I was, I was out of there, you know, I was on to the next grade or, um, you know, so um, I might have helped start it off, but it wasn't there when I was there. And I don't know if, if they were teaching the things that I would have wanted to know. So they're probably just low level again. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, dude, that's what's up. Yeah, I would love to see more more of those programs and stuff out there in Chicago land. Um, but yeah, man, I think, I think, uh, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, and we, you know, we could bring it to a close as far as, you know, the people who are listening, which, you know, I don't have like a huge audience or anything, you know, probably between five and 12 people that listen right now, but hopefully <laughs> grows. Um, but uh, for them, uh, you know, what do you want to tell them about, you know, what you're doing as far as where to follow you, where to like find your stuff, this and that, you can share with them. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um... So, I mean, I will be, I'm still trying to work on my own personal projects, um, releasing um, like music videos and all that. So I will have like a YouTube up and I do have a SoundCloud and I'm still trying to learn how to, um, which, I mean, it took some time, but how to release your own music onto other platforms. Um, so I'm definitely working on that. So I'm hoping, you know, not too long from now, but maybe within two months, I'll have that set up and I can drop or release my first song that was probably finished like four years ago now. Or, <laughs> uh, but I have a, a private link on SoundCloud that I'm willing to share with a couple of songs that I currently have um, that I, you know, I don't mind if anyone listens to or anything. So. So, but they can, um, do you have like a, instagram that they can find that at or anything um or i could put it i could put that link in the description but otherwise maybe to keep up with your progress as you move towards the next projects right uh okay so yeah i can provide the link and i think maybe i'll just put it up on my so my little uh, company's name is uh soul wave studios and uh you can find me there on instagram so we'll you know, it's, you'll see Soul Wave Studios on all platforms as well, um, so TikTok and um, well, I, we just have an Instagram right now. We'll have our website um, coming soon. I just I actually had a PC downtime for like almost a month now. I finally got it running. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, I'll be working on a website soon and maybe I'll throw some of my preview or song previews there. But for now, I, I guess I can provide it to you in the description. Um, here, I'll, I'll paste it there now, actually. So, so yeah, I'll put it in the description. Cool, Milo. Well, it's been real, man. It's been too long. It's been how many years since we had since we had talked? Man, twenty fifteen was probably the last year. Or twenty fifteen? Yeah, that's when I graduated. Yeah. Yeah, same year. No shit, we graduated the same year. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah, Christine graduated the same year as me too, and she's yeah, I think she she was your grade. Oh um, man. Anyway. Um, but yeah, man, thanks for joining and thanks for telling your story and, uh, yeah, I hope to have you back on, man. Definitely.